This is a really interesting question type, and it's an important one because it's a strange operation that pretty much no one would innately know how to do. And it seems to be really important to College Board because it showed up on one of their online tests and it's showing up in the test bank. So first of all, we have two equations and we're solving. Usually when you have two equations and you're being asked for anything related to the solution, it's an intersection situation. So let's just think for a second about the three ways two lines can interact. They can hit once, never, or all the time. And those all have ramifications on the slopes and the y-intercepts. Now, to figure out which one it is here, generally you're going to solve for y because when you get y by itself for a line, you're going to have it in the format of y equals mx plus b. Now, what happens here is when you solve these for y, you get the same thing both times. So let's do it for the first one. 8x plus 7y equals 9. Take away 8x from both sides. And you get negative 8x plus 9 and divide by 7. Negative 8 over 7x plus 9 over 7. Doing it for the bottom one, 24x plus 21y is 27. Take away 24x from both sides. Divide by 21. Now, if you divide this by 3, you'll get y is negative 8 over 7x. And if you divide this by 3, you'll get 9 over 7. So the thing to notice for now is that we got the same situation both times. And so we're in our infinite solution situation. Both of these lines are the same line. They're hitting all the time. Now, the next thing we have to do here, there's no real logical reason you should know to do this other than you've seen this question before, you've studied, and you're ready for it. And what it is, is the idea that we're supposed to create a verbal statement for this situation. And the verbal statement should be done in terms of Y and also in terms of X. So let's just take one second to reorganize this. Instead of Y equals, we're gonna organize it as X equals. So if we start again with 8X plus 7Y equals nine, we can take away 7Y from both sides negative 7y plus 9, and then divide by 8. Negative 7 over 8y plus 9 over 8. And now, in this question type that we're talking about, what you need to do is have a verbal statement for each of these. So what we mean is, for the y equals situation, which is you know, either one of these right here, that can be stated as the y value is what you get when you multiply x. We're multiplying x by negative 8 over 7. And then we're adding 9 over 7 to that. So once again, we're taking that equation that we had there. And we're just kind of verbally stating that the y value is what you get when you multiply x by negative 8 over 7 and then add 9 over 7 to that. And we're going to do the same thing for the other expression where we're going to say the x value is what you get when you multiply y by negative 7, 8, negative 7 over 8, and then add 9 over 8 to that. So that does match right here. It says the x value is what you get when you multiply y by negative 7 over 8 and then add 9 over 8 to that. So we've got both of our verbal statements. And really, the only reason we're doing these is because we're being told to do them. It's just a familiar scenario that we need to know about. Now, looking at the answer choices, we kind of know that C and D couldn't be the answer. Actually, before we get into that, Let's just kind of make the answer choices easier to see. These are all of our x values because they come before the comma. And these are all of our y values because they're after the commas. And we kind of know the answer can't be C or D because we're looking for something that says 
x equals, which is what we would see here, x equals something when you relate it to the other one, or y equals something. So the idea that they're independent by themselves is kind of what you need in this situation. So answer choice A says the y value right here is what you get when you take the x value, which is r, and you multiply by negative 8 over 7, and then add 9 over 7. So the y value is what you get when you multiply the x value, r, by negative 8 over 7, and then add 9 over 7. That sounds pretty good. Answer choice B is saying that the x value is what you get when you take the y value, r, and multiply it by negative eight over seven and add nine over seven. Is that what it says right here? The X value is what you get when you take the Y value and B says you multiply by negative eight over seven, but we see negative seven over eight. And then we should be adding nine over seven, but here we see nine over eight. So the X statement didn't work out, but the Y one did. So one more time, coming back to answer choice A. Answer choice A says, the y value, which is in blue there, let's cross all of these out now that we know that they're wrong. It says the y value is what you get when you take the x value, which is r, you multiply it by negative 8 over 7, so x times negative 8 over 7, and then add 9 over 7, and that was what the y value was. So it's answer choice A here, and we hope this helped.